Thank you for coming to the presentation on a new look at the simple digit modalities test in multiple sclerosis and disability. My name is Elon Liu and I am from UAB School of Medicine and I will be giving you this presentation. We will go over the importance of simple digit modalities test in MS cognitive disability, the method that we use doing eye tracking in SDMT in looking at the eye movement with highlights on upward saccade, and we'll go through the results and conclusions of our study. Going into a little bit of the background, for patients with MS, walking and visual impairments are often talked about, but cognitive impairments affect multiple sclerosis patients as well. And a way to measure this is done through SDMT, which measures the information processing speed of patients. Information processing speed can be measured by having the patient solve a particular problem or puzzle under a controlled setting. And this is exactly what the SDMT is. In this puzzle of SDMT, you match the symbol with the number from the key that is depicted above. As you go down the list, you call out the answers and go through as many items as you can in 90 seconds. The average oral SDMT score in patients with MS is 54, while it's 67 in healthy controls. Going into methods, the SDMT, the eye tracker, the chin rest, and the computer were set up in this manner at the MS clinic. The chin rest was used to make sure that head movements wouldn't interfere with eye movements in the tracking. We had 38 adults with MS but without the clinical ocular motor impairments because we are trying to measure the information processing speed associated with SDMT and not the ocular motor impairment that also could be measured by eye tracking. The following is the descriptions of eye movements that we pinpointed out from the SDMT. There were essentially three different kinds of eye movement. As you can see in red, we called that the key area search. And it is the eye movement of searching within the keys that occurred. Meaning the movement that the patient spent to look around the key to find the perfect symbol. The green represents answer area search which is the movement of searching within the answer area while you proceed through the SDMT. And the blue is something that we really focus on, which we call the upward saccade. And this is the transition from the answer area to the key area every time the patient looked back up at the key to match the symbol to the number. So adding all these search up, that is the sum of all the colors, and that is the total distance that the eye moved in nine seconds. Now I wanna show you an animation of the eye movement that we use to count the upward saccade. On PowerPoint, you can actually create an animation with all the eye movements that the participant did during the SDMT. You can visualize all the upstrokes and where it accumulates, which is the location of the key. For this participant, we counted 56 upstrokes. And the upstrokes or upward saccade is important because it represents the use of working memory. Working memory allows you to memorize which symbol correlates with which number. And the further you go, down on the SDMT, 
you should be able to rely more on your working memory and not have to look back up at the key to check your answers as much. Thus, the upstrokes should decrease as you go down the SDMT. However, as we will explain a little bit later, this was not what we found in our results. The total of upward saccade was actually significantly positively correlated with the STMD score, meaning that the more times that you looked up back at the key, the better you did on the SDMT. We also tried to look at what about if there is a difference in the number of upstrokes the first 45 seconds of the STMT test versus the second half, the second 45 seconds of the STMT test. However, there was still not a significant difference in the number of upstrokes. And overall, the more upstrokes you had, the better you did on the STMT. And we really wondered why and came up with some ideas that we will go over later. I want to first show you a visual comparison of the eye movement organization. So here is a MS participant with PDDS score of four. PDDS is called the patient determined disease steps. And this is a measure of disability in MS as well, but this is more having to do with movement and walking, and we included this in our study to give you an idea of how far along in MS these participants are and how much disability they're struggling with. And so on this graph, this participant actually had the worst SDMT score, and you can see how unorganized all the movements are it's going everywhere and versus the next graph that you see this is actually our best stmt score and this participant had pdds score of one and you can see the upstrokes are way more organized and generally you can see a big difference in eye movement between two deep, two of these graphs moving on to these two graphs. So what we have on the left is a PDDS score of seven, which is the worst out of all our participants. And you can see even this person was somehow somewhat organized with the upstrokes, but definitely not as much as the control healthy participants. We hope to break apart more of the eye movements and analyze the difference between multiple sclerosis participants and the control healthy to pinpoint some kind of pattern in cognitive slowing that occurs just in multiple sclerosis, which can be used to develop rehabilitation techniques. What I mean by this is that, for example, by extracting various parts of the eye movement on this test, we can begin to address whether one kind of eye movement is related to overall speed than is another. And in turn, if we find that one kind of movement that is closely related to the overall speed of processing, then it could lead to further examinations, such as is the process more cognitive or is it non-cognitive? such as motor. The answer could point to future directions of neurological rehabilitations for MS. And the cool thing about this study is that because we have a comprehensive measure of the eye movement on the SCMT, we are able to figure all of this out. So in conclusion, I want to go back and talk about the unexpected result of how the total of upward saccade 
was actually positively correlated with the IPS score or the SDMT score. We now think that it is possible that SDMT score increases with increase in total upward saccade up to a point. But in order to score even higher, one must rely on working memory and remember the items rather than look up back at the key, which increases the total number of upstrokes. So as a MS participant who are scoring lower on the SDMT, you are probably checking the answer key less during the test because you're getting lost during the visual search. That is actually completely reflected by the eye movement that we track, that they're kind of moving everywhere. While for higher scoring participants, they're able to organize their thoughts and processes and look back up at the key every time. And that helps them to have a higher SDMT score, but to have even better SDMT score is when people start memorizing it and incorporating working memory. And we hope to highlight all of these spectrums of differences in eye movement and how they're answering in SDMT when we incorporate control healthy participants in those data as well. Thus, the Upward saccade may not so much represent working memory, but rather as a strategy to assure successful test completion that is not effectively being used by lower scoring persons with multiple sclerosis. And further research will be needed to assess the criterion validity of specific SDMT eye movement measures relative to the standard cognitive test assessments. As acknowledgement, I would like to thank my mentor, Dr. Victor Mark and Sean Bowman, Razim Mahad, Dr. Stacy Cofield, Dr. Jeanette Niemeyer, and the physicians of the UAB MS Clinic who helped with all of this research. Thank you very much for the, listening to the presentation.